We are here with State Attorney Lawson Lamar, and what we're discussing is the issue of juvenile crime. Um, crimes committed by juveniles are obviously a major concern in an area like Central Florida. Um, what, what does your office do with uh, juveniles that are accused of crimes? The most serious ones are the gun crimes and the very assaultive juveniles. I brought in the sheriffs and the police chiefs in our circuit and I asked them to have cases built on the shooters, the gun carriers, the most violent juveniles so that we could take them into adult circuit court and send them out of the community. This act has produced a two-thirds reduction in serious juvenile gun crime. It's amazing. We've also had very large decreases in other aspects of juvenile crime. But by taking the shooters and the most dangerous juveniles out of the community, we have lowered murders, robberies, and carjackings with guns by two-thirds. That's not just a statistic. It's people who are alive today, not carjacked, not beaten up, not shot, that would have otherwise been hurt, injured, killed, whatever. And this has worked in a great teamwork effort with the police agencies. Now, on the other end of the pool, the shallow end, where a child has perhaps possessed some alcohol or maybe a little bit of marijuana or stolen some earrings at a store or something like that, we actually divert 39% of the juveniles into programs where they restore the victim by making restitution, they are put back in school, they're alcohol rehabbed, anger rehabbed, you know, whatever uh, it takes. They have to go to drug treatment, uh, they have to have clean urine tests whatever it takes to get that youngster back on track because we'd much rather educate children than prosecute them. I have two investigators who do nothing but keep youngsters in school. We have kept thousands of poor kids mostly in school because if we can keep them in school they have a chance of success in this society. They might be productive citizens. These are all chronic truants that we've gotten back into the classroom and We've kept thousands in, and I can't tell you how many thousands, because we'll never know, have been kept on the straight and narrow because of this. And with the, the ones that we have to send off to state prison, the first year we did that was in 2006. I had to send 4% that, that year. This year, we've only sent about 2%. It's working. There's deterrence, and we have removed the kids that are terrorizing the neighborhoods, shooting compliant 7-Eleven clerks. I mean, when a clerk hands over the money and gets shot, Juvenile justice is not set up to take care of them. They've got to go away to the big house. And when they're in the big house, they're not in the community hurting people. Okay, so um, when you're dealing with these um, juvenile diversion programs, what other agencies are, is your office working with? We're working with the Department of Juvenile Justice. We're working with various groups, the school systems, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, drug treatment houses, psychological folks who work on anger management. We have 14 programs in the two counties where we send this 39 percent of the shallowest end juveniles to try to get them turned around. And believe me, the numbers are really encouraging. Uh, by making them participate, we're able to tell them that if they succeed, they won't be criminal convicted people. And if they don't succeed and they don't work at it, we have to prosecute them. So that's a strong carrot and a stick. It's a motivator for young people. And we're also beginning now, beginning to let police officers, deputy sheriffs, issue what looks like a ticket. It's called a civil citation to juveniles who are very minor offenders so that they don't have to say later when they go into the military or college that they've been arrested if they're truly minor offenses where that officer and the victim are willing to participate and allow that child a second chance. If they fail at the second chance, they get prosecuted. 